My name is Deborah Rutter, and I have the great honor and privilege of being the president of the John F. Kennedy Center for the Performing Arts. Welcome, and thank you for being here. We ordered great weather, but I'm still going to wear my red jacket anyway, because it's festive. It, in September of 1971, History was made when the Kennedy Center was opened with a very special performance. On November 29, 1962, history was made when a simulcast performance across the country featuring all of the great artists of that time was hosted by President and Mrs. John F. Kennedy and I like to say that it was the precursor to uh, the modern day Kennedy Center honors. We are here today for another historic moment, one that I think and hope we will all be able to remember and cherish. We have some special guests who you'll hear from shortly, but they provide that link from that time in 1962 and even 1971 to this day. So I just want us to have a moment to reflect on the importance of relationship, the importance of service, um, the importance of courage, um, the freedom that we enjoy in our country, and today an expression of gratitude as well. These are ideals that we hold close as a part of the legacy of President John F. Kennedy, and which guide us every day in our work here. I'm thrilled to have you all here on the beautiful landscape of the Reach. A dream of David Rubenstein to expand and create open, beautiful, welcoming spaces where people will come and stay. That was the impetus that he expressed to me, and that is exactly what has happened here. This has become a destination for community, for arts experiences, and inside these magnificent pavilions, uh, exploration and participation in the arts. So it is um, an important moment for us as we probably are not completing the reach, but adding importantly, on this 50th anniversary year to the REACH. My great joy in my work is the colleagues I get to work with, the individual performances, the artists we engage with, importantly, the audiences who come and share in those. But one of the most extraordinary ones is the ability to know and be inspired by, for, learn from, and collaborate with David Rubenstein. I always have to pay really close attention when you talk to David Rubenstein. I know everybody in this room, in this space, knows that. Because David, in casual comment, will say, I think, what do you think? And here behind this blue cloth is one of those brilliant David Rubenstein ideas. All of these pavilions, this landscape, this garden, is a David Rubenstein idea. This one will change the landscape and the memorial to John F. Kennedy forever. And it was David Rubenstein's inspiration. He has long wanted something that was a little bit more human scale, one that was really deeply reflective of our former president. And uh, I think we have something very special to share with you today. David is the man with the idea, the energy, the support who made this happen. And as all of you who know David know, he's been involved in every single piece of this. Every single piece of this. He went to the foundry three months ago just to make sure it was going to look exactly right. How many times we met with the, with the designers, uh, the people who brought this to life. So you will hear from him shortly, but I'd like to invite David to come for you to express some gratitude now and then for you to be able to see this magnificent new piece.
So thank you all for coming. And Deborah, thank you for your overly generous comments. Uh, some of you believe in uh, climate change, no doubt, and no doubt believe that it's part of, part of climate change that in December it should be this warm. I like to think it's God looking favorably upon this uh, statue and looking favorably upon the Kennedy Center. So it depends on your point of view. Um, my own view is that uh, I owe a lot to John Kennedy because as a young boy in Baltimore, I uh, was inspired by his commitment to public service and giving back to our country. Tragically, he didn't live as long as many of us have lived, uh, but in the short time he was on this earth, 46 years, he managed to do more to inspire people in my generation than anybody else that I know of. So I thought, as we have this facility now, the REACH, while it's a wonderful facility and Deborah deserves much more of the credit than I do for actually making it actually happen, it would be good to have something that reminds people of President Kennedy. While we are a performing arts center and an arts education center, we also are a living memorial to President Kennedy. We have a bust of President Kennedy and we're adding additional things about President Kennedy in the main building, but I thought here it'd be a good idea to finally have a statue of President Kennedy so people can come and uh, have their picture taken with them, get to see them and so forth. And so I'm really pleased that Deborah and the team at the Kennedy Center found an excellent Foundry EIS. Where, where are the people from EIS that did this? Could you stand up? Uh, thank you very much for putting this together. Um, you know, these things don't happen, uh, you know, in a, in a couple of hours or so, right? It takes a, about a year or plus or a year and a half. So it took a while to get it done. And uh, Deborah and I and, and uh, Ellery, Ellery, where is Ellery? Ellery, thank you very much, Ellery, for overseeing this project and everybody else who worked on it. So it's, uh, it's a great pleasure to be here to see it. Hopefully, all, some of you will have your picture taken with it. I suspect over the years, many people will treat this like the Einstein Memorial that's over at the uh, National Academy of Sciences. People want to have their picture taken with it, as they should, because um, President Kennedy did so much for our country in his 40, 46 years in, of life. One of the great pleasures of being the chairman of the Kennedy Center is having a chance to honor President Kennedy and all he did for our country, but also a chance to work with and get to know his incredible daughter, Caroline. Uh, I've gotten to know Caroline in the years that I've been the chair, and she's always been available for anything that we want to do at the Kennedy Center. She's been involved in so many other Kennedy projects, the Kennedy Library, the Kennedy School at Harvard, and so many other things in her life. And, and she and her husband, Ed, have raised three wonderful children, one of whom was on our board as well. Caroline served on our board briefly before she became ambassador to Japan, and I would ask her to come back on our board again, uh, but there's a rumor that she might be an ambassador again somewhere else. I don't know. It hasn't been announced yet, but uh, whatever she does, she will do a great job for our country, and it, there, we could have no better ambassador for this country than Caroline Kennedy. So, Caroline, thank you for everything you've done for our country. Please come up if you would. Thank you, David. Uh, that was unbelievably nice. And thank you, everyone. It's great to see uh, so many new board members, um, as well as so many old friends. Um, and it's an honor to be here with uh, Valerie Biden, especially. So um, I want to salute Deborah Rutter for her steadfast leadership in, during these challenging times and her commitment to the ideals that President Kennedy lived by, justice, and equity, and inclusion in the arts. All Americans owe a debt of gratitude to David Rubenstein for making our history, our culture, and our democratic ideals accessible to the widest possible audience and to new generations. And this is just the latest example. We literally would not be here at the Kennedy Center today, and certainly not at the REACH, if it were not for David's generosity and vision. This weekend is an annual opportunity for self-reflection, as the artists we honor and those that perform reflect our culture back to us. This statue also provides that chance, and I think we can learn a lot about ourselves in this moment in time by looking at the statue's past in the other building and present. And I look forward to seeing how visitors experience President Kennedy's humanity when they experience this work of art. So thank you to EIS for uh, making it possible. Now it's my privilege to introduce someone I deeply admire and you all know well. 
One of the most important moments of my father's presidency was when the elderly Pablo Casals, who had sacrificed his career to protest dictatorship and oppression, came out of exile to play for my father because he believed that President Kennedy could lead the world to a new era of freedom and peace. Yo-Yo Ma is the direct descendant of that moment and perhaps the last artist living who played for my parents at the White House. He has become the artistic conscience of our time and redefined the role of the artist as global humanitarian. Yo-Yo uses music to heal suffering and bridge differences, and he does it everywhere he goes, from the Silk Road to the border at Laredo, from the Kennedy Center to the Grand Canyon, from the south side of Chicago to the battlefields of Okinawa, Japan. He spent 40 years performing at schools across America that have never experienced classical music, and he has uplifted all of us with his cello during the pandemic. Yo-Yo never stops showing the world how music can open our hearts and allow us to understand each other, connecting people in a way that is today's version of Pablo Casals' solitary stance against tyranny. On a personal level, this is a special moment for me because while we all feel that we have a bond with Yo-Yo Ma, mine is the best. Lots of people can say that Yo-Yo Ma played for their fathers, but I bet I'm the only one here who can say that I played for his father. Not long after the Ma family came to the United States from China and Paris with four-year-old Yo-Yo, Dr. Ma became the cello teacher at the Convent of the Sacred Heart where I was in the third grade orchestra. Thank you so much and please welcome Dr. Ma's other pupil. Thank you to my fellow cellist, Caroline. Um, so what is a living memorial? Another way of putting it is to ask the question, what is worth remembering? From the speakers you just heard, it is fairly obvious why they would not only want to remember, but to connect those memories to their daily lives as guideposts for their thinking and actions. But what about all of you? What about the newly arrived Afghan family with us today? What about the young students visiting REACH, hearing about President Kennedy for the very first time? What connection will each of them make to the words, ideas, ideals, and courage experienced by another. As you all know, knowledge of history makes us empathetic to the present and connects us to the actions that affect our future. And I think ultimately, each generation chooses what to remember from the previous ones. My own moment of connection, as Caroline mentioned, came early on, 59 years ago, when I was seven years old and a brand new immigrant from France. I had the unique and unlikely privilege to play in front of President and Mrs. Kennedy at one of the first fundraisers for what would become the Kennedy Center for the Performing Arts. Playing at that event not only introduced me to my first president, it also introduced me to an America whose ideals I fervently believe in. To this day, President Kennedy's words guide my values and actions as a citizen. They make me want to continue to believe, to participate, to make small differences every day, and to make sure the Kennedy Center for the Performing Arts will always be a living memorial to his words, deeds, and ideals, and do the same for generations to come. So now I'd like to play something for you.